Hi, this is Steven, and in this video, I wanted to talk about materials, some of their properties, and the general workflow in Maya. First, to point this out, materials provide this base surface for objects in Maya and other 3D software applications. While this process I'm going through in Maya, you can apply this to pretty much any software application that you can use for 3D, game engines, other 3D software applications you can use. But materials provide this base surface of an object where they're applied. This can include color, reflectivity, specularity, incandescence, as well as others. While an object needs a material to properly render, the final appearance is a combination of materials and textures. So just to point this out, I have a couple different cubes here in Maya that I've set up and just applied different materials to. This one happens to be a specific material that I'll talk about in a second. This one right here is a Lambert material. So over here in the attribute editor, I can look at this material properties and see what properties belong to this specific material. So this Lambert, I can assign Sign color, transparency, ambient color, incandescence. Important thing to realize is that on this Lambert material, these are built-in materials in Maya. A Lambert material doesn't have any specularity like these other two. This one right here is a blend material. So if I go to this material, you can see that there's a specular shading and a couple different properties for the specular shading. This material right here is a fong. And in this, you have a couple different properties that make up the specular shading. However, these have reflectivity and specularity, while the Lambert does not. Well, as I said, these materials are specific to Maya. There are other materials that are specific to other render engines. Maya currently ships with a render engine called Arnold, and I have it currently installed. But if you do not see the Arnold menu up here, you can go down to Window, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager, and if you scroll mostly all the way to the bottom, you're going to see an mtoa.bundle. As long as this is checked, the loaded is checked, that plugin is going to be enabled, and that's going to show you that Arnold plugin is what enables all the Arnold materials and the Arnold rendering. So if I go up here and open up the Arnold render view for this particular scene, while I do have a light in this scene, and I have the materials, I have the default materials, from Maya as well as one of the materials is an Arnold material, I can see that it'll start rendering the scene if I go ahead and press that little play button right there, right? And I can dolly out of this, can move out of this and see these materials rendering. Already I see that the Lambert is a very just a flat color. The Fong and the Blend both have specularity and reflectivity. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this because I want to talk about this other material. Now the attribute editor can show all the material properties for each one of these materials, but it can also establish connection to other nodes. And just to kind of bring this up, that Maya is a node-based system, and each one of these tabs represent a node. So the Lambert is the name of the object that I called this. It's just the transform node, which moves it around in space in Maya. The Lambert shape is actually the mesh. You can see right here, it's the actual mesh shape. I actually gave it a display layer called materials, which is another node. And then it has a node named Lambert, which is the surface. And all those nodes are interconnected. Important to point out with the attribute editor is you'll see this little map button. When you click that, you're going to open up the create render node. And in here, you can assign different textures to that attribute. So that map button will allow you to do things like connect a file to it, or in this example, assign a fractal to the color channel of that specific material. I'm going to undo so I can bring it back. I can assign it just a regular color as well. The map button will assign another node to that particular channel or that particular property. The same as transparency. If I choose that map button, and choose something, let's say, the fractal again, I can see what it's doing is it's assigning specific areas that are transparent and others that are not, based on certain properties of this specific texture. So if I change the amplitude or change the threshold, you can see that I can change that material and how much of that material will shine through because I've mapped it to transparency. So I'm going to go ahead and undo again. This is not exactly what I want, but it's just to show you how these map buttons can map specific textures 
to that surface. Another thing that I wanted to show you is how Maya is set up as a node-based system. If I go right here, this is the Hypershade. If you click here, you can open up the Hypershade. It's also available if you go to Windows, Rendering Editors, and Hypershade. That'll bring up this Hypershade window. But that's easy enough to go to right there. The Hypershade window is used for connecting different shading materials, textures, lights, utilities, and it's going to show the connectedness between those nodes. While it's not just limited to materials and textures, it can show a lot of different connections like cameras and lights and almost anything that you can connect in Maya you can see in the Hypershade window. It's very efficient for working on just about any node in Maya. There's a menu and a toolbar at the top and then over here on the left we have the Create tab. There's an, an, a bin down here, a work area. Then we have a material viewer and the property editor. And just so to point out, a lot of these windows can be moved up and down. So if I grab the little separator in between them, not the connector part because that will dock and undock it, right? So I can move that in and out if I need to. But you'll notice this is a lot like the attribute editor here. It actually shows you what I have selected the viewer will show you what the materials and textures will look like. So right now it's showing the shader ball. I can switch it to a teapot or a glass fill, right? But I'm gonna go ahead and keep it on the shader ball. The create area allows you to create new materials and textures. Up in here on these tabs, it allows me to select different materials or different objects. So say the textures, but I can grab materials. So I can select multiple materials and I can see what they look like over here in the material viewer, right? This little button right here is the in and out connections of that material. So I'm gonna click that button. I'm gonna see all the materials that are connected to that. But just to keep it simple, I'm gonna bring up this Lambert, this Lambert 10, and I'm gonna press input and output connections button. You're gonna see that I have the Lambert 10 and this Lambert 10 SG. This is the shading group. These are just the default names that Maya has assigned to them. So you're gonna see when I select that, it says shading engine. That's the Lambert 10 SG. That is the topmost node of this entire shading group. It's called a shading group. And when you have multiple textures and other nodes that are connected to the shading group, you will see them here. There can be a volume material, a displacement material in the shading group. But right now, what this shading group will be attached to this particular object because it's been assigned. And I'll talk about how it's assigned later. But just to realize, when I connect something to the Lambert 10, I can just select this. You can actually see it's making a connection from out color to the surface shader. That's how you can tell that it's actually made a connection between nodes. When I select both of these and choose the input and output connections, it will show everything that's connected other than the mesh itself at this point in time. So if I select the Lambert 10 and I map that to, let's say, let's go back and make it a fractal, and I dolly my camera out a little bit, right? Now I see all these nodes and how they're connected, right? So now I have this Lambert 10 is connected to the shading group. I have this fractal and I have what's called a place 2D texture node, which actually allows it to display on the surface of the object, right? So this fractal's out color is going into the in color of the Lambert 10. Important to realize that how these nodes are interconnected. I can actually delete these and sever the connections and then I can get it back to looking like a default. It doesn't bring the color back because it changed the color based on the fractal. So I'm going to undo until I get the fractal out. There, and now we're back. So I'm going to close the Hypershade window, and I'm going to talk about how you make connections or how you assign a material. The first thing to point out is when I make a brand new object, let's say a cube, and I'm just going to drag a cube out here, move it up. When I make that, you'll notice all the way over here on the attribute editor that it's assigned it to a Lambert 1. Just to point this out, the Lambert 1 is only a default material used for brand new objects. You should not be using this to make surfaces and textures on your objects because anytime I create a new object, it will have those same properties. So let's say I change this color to, to blue or teal or some other color, 
you'll notice that my background changed because it's also assigned to the Lambert one, right? And anytime I make a new object, I'm going to be making it with that Lambert one. So I'm going to undo until I get that off. So just so you realize when you make a new object, it's always going to be assigned Lambert one. So as soon as you start shading, get off the Lambert one, assign it a new material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign it as an Arnold material. So I'm going to right click and down here at the bottom, you can actually see material attributes, but you have the ability to assign a new material, assign a favorite material and assign an existing material. Clearly existing are ones that I've already created. Assigning a favorite material means it's going to be a brand new material based on one of these selections. Just to point this out, that it does not create a new material for the Arnold Render Engine. These are all just the basic default ones in Maya. But if I go to Assign New Material, it's going to bring up this Assign New Material window. And in this window, I have a couple different options. It's only giving me the options that are available for the object that I have selected. So right now under Favorites, it's choosing only the Maya materials. But if I go down to Arnold and go to Shader, I have a lot more. One of the default ones for Arnold is the AI Standard Surface. I'm going to assign it. I can always go back and change it to something else, right? But usually what you want to do is once you choose one of these, you want to leave it at that and then just assign a new material and you can deal with getting rid of this later. You'll see that it's assigned a shading group and it's named the shading group after the material. I can change that material. Let's just call it matte underscore cube for lack of a better term. And then I can give the base a color. You'll notice one of the big differences with the Arnold materials is that you have a lot more properties that have a lot more options for this particular material, right? So while in the Maya materials, you have a Lambert, a Fong, a Blinn, here I have the ability to change it from one to the other, or modify the values so I can have one or the other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign it just a color. I'm going to choose this teal color. If I give it some metalness, when I render that, I'm going to go up to the Arnold menu, go to Open Arnold Render View, and bring that view up. Now, if I click that play button again, you're going to see that it's going to start to render. Right? Now, just for fun, what I'm going to end up doing, I'm going to leave this going. Because once it starts rendering out, it's actually rendering it progressively, and I can interact with Maya as it's rendering. So I'm going to go over to this cube, and I'm going to right-click I'm going to go to assign existing material and I'm going to find that material cube and I'm going to assign it to that and you can instantly see that it starts to render that. You can also see that it's actually picking up a little bit of color around it. So I'm going to go to this material in the attribute editor and then I can go and reduce the metalness if I want to. It's actually got a specular color and weight, how much weight the specularity has the roughness, how rough the surface is for the specularity. Since the metalness gives me reflectivity, if I bump that up, you can start to see it. other objects are being reflected in it. I'm not going to go through every property in this video, but you have a lot of different properties like transmission, how the light transmits through the surface, subsurface, which is like your skin, sub subsurface scattering. So the light will get under the skin a little bit and scatter around. There's coat and sheen and emission. Emission is, does the object give off light? So there's a lot of different properties that these materials can contain. But this is just a brief rundown about how you can assign materials, how you can change certain properties, and how you can map textures to those properties. Hopefully this helps and good luck with it.